One verse. And, uh, this is the prayers by Lord Maharaj, Lord Mishrigadev. Nago Dwijam Pra and Radhya Vaita Ramya Sambhira Dhamma Mahamitam Mahamitika Sichotaka Mukri Mukka Chaitasa Indriya Sam Maya Sita Yam Bhagavan Vidya Sam Bhagavan So Jaitato Mukti Muktam Chit Jaitasa Indriyatam Maya Sukayam I'll put this in my head. The best of the great personalities. My concern is only for the fools and rascals who are making elaborate plans for material happiness and maintaining their families, societies, and countries. I'm simply concerned with love for them. Report. Throughout the entire world, everyone's making big, big plans to adjust the miseries of the material world. And this is true at present, in the past, and in the future. Nonetheless, although they make elaborate plans, social and cultural plans. They have all been described here as vimuda fools. The material world has been described in Bhagavad Gita as Tukaliyam Asasvatam, temporary and miserable, but these fools are trying to turn the material world into Sukaliyam, a place of happiness. Not knowing how everything acts by the arrangement of material nature, which works in their own way, Prakriti, Kriyamanadi, Unikarna, Sarvashara, Ahankara, Vimunatma, Kartaham, Nitubhanyate. The bewildered spirit soul under the influence of the three modes of material nature thinks himself to be the doer of activities that are naturally carried out by nature. <coughs> there is a plan for material nature, firstly known as Durga, to punish the demons. Although the Asuras, the godless demons, struggle for existence, 
they are directly attacked by the goddess Durga, who is well equipped with ten hands with different types of weapons to punish the demons. She is carried by her lion carrier or the mode of passion and ignorance. Everyone struggles very hard to fight through the modes of passion and ignorance and conquer material nature, but at the end, everyone is vanquished by, by nature's laws. There is a river known as Vaitarani between the material and spiritual world. And one must cross this river to reach the other side or the spiritual world. This is an extremely difficult task, as the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita, Dairiya Mamamaya Momamayandarateya. This divine energy consisting of the three modes of material nature is very difficult to overcome. The same word, Dharateya, meaning very difficult, is, very, is used here. Therefore, one cannot surpass the stringent laws of material nature except by the mercy of the Supreme One. Nonetheless, although the materialists are baffled in their plans, they try again and again to be happy in the material world. Therefore, they have been described as the Mudha, first class fools. As for Prahlad Maharaj, he was not at all unhappy, for though he was in the material world, he was full of Krishna consciousness. Those who are Krishna consciousness trying to serve the Lord are not unhappy, whereas one who has no assets in Krishna consciousness and is struggling for existence is not only foolish, but extremely unhappy also. Prahlad Maharaj was happy and unhappy simultaneously. He felt happiness and transcendental bliss because of his being Krishna conscious, yet he felt great unhappiness for the fools and rascals make elaborate plans to be happy in this material world. Shivanti Bhakti Vedanta Swamiti Namine Namaste Sir Bhakti Deve Govardhani Kachayane Hirvase Sasunya Vadi Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa to this Jack Sindhu Pei Vacha Titanam Bhakti Jai Sri this particular verse is a series of verses which are the players of the Lord of Honor on the floor of the Trinity. This is after the rain has been killed. Prahlad Maharaj is a, a great devotee. He's also one of the Mahajans. In the sense that he teaches the science of bhakti. He is equipped with full knowledge, Mahajan, Mahajano Yena Kata which means that there are 12 persons who are designated as great personalities who know the entire science of bhakti and can teach that science. Brahma, Shiva, Narada, Vokumaras, Janaka Rish, Bhishma Dev, Bali Maharaj, Balad, Vokumaras, you mentioned those. Um, who else? Sukadev Goswami, Bali Maharaj, and Yamaraj also. Pilat is included amongst them. So the Lord now is pleased with Pilat for his great devotion. And at the same time, he wants to give Pilat Maharaj a benediction. Because 
he's so happy with his bhakti and how much he was compassionate even towards his own father, the demon, Rani Kashipu. Although he was killed by the Lord, Prahlad was still thinking about the welfare of his father. And when the Lord asked him, you know, I'm so pleased with you, please take a benediction. He said, I'm not a Vinik, I'm not a virtue. I don't worship you in order to get something from you or anything. I worship you out of love. But the Lord was still very persistent and continued to encourage Prahlad to take a benediction. And finally, at one point, he said, Well, just give liberation to my father. He said, That's already been done. As soon as he was killed, he achieved perfection. In other words, he achieved liberation. So would you look at it? And uh, so then the Lord again came back. The Lord said, well, actually, my Lord, you're so persistent. <laughs> he would see how persistent the Lord was in wanting to give him a benediction. And he wasn't at all interested in receiving anything. But so finally, he spoke this particular verse that, there's a class of people that they call them vimudhas, vimudhas. And that is the people who make up the material world and live in order to enjoy, try to enjoy the material energy, which is Krishna's energy. Mama Maya, he says, it's my energy. So no one can enjoy the, the property of somebody else. If you do, then you're considered to be what? Fool and rascal, but you're also a thief. So they're trying to enjoy stolen property or something that doesn't belong to them in the first place. And the material energy is contrary to the soul's nature, and therefore it's not enjoyable because when the soul is by nature, you know, pure and spiritual, the material energy is temporary and miserable. And so that there is a contrary in nature, and therefore one cannot enjoy it. But we see mm -hmm. Prahlad Maharaj's, he wants to do something good for people in general. He says, I have no anxiety myself. I'm happy. I can stay anywhere. Because wherever I am, I, can fo I focus my mind on you. But there is a class of people who need, so you need your mercy. Although they don't look for your mercy, still we should try to give it to them. And that is the, the gross materialist. So he's praying for them that he can do something to stay in this material world. And the Lord actually granted that benediction that he was allowed to stay. He could have went back to the spiritual world immediately. But the Lord, but he wanted to stay and preach. So Prabhupada explains how. There are a class of personalities who make their service to the Lord life after life to preach the glories of the Lord. Even though they may qualify themselves to return to the spiritual world, they have developed pure love of God. Still, they want to express that love by staying in this material world in some whatever manifestation it was higher planets, lower planets, middle planets, and preach the glories of the Lord. And Srila Prabhupada reacted very enthusiastically when His Holiness Tamal Krishna made that. He said, is there some people who never go back and stay in the material world and just preach life after life? Prabhupada said, yes, in a very enthusiastic way. So you know, the great souls may check into the material world and then check a spiritual world, I'm sorry, and then check out again and go and do the world. So this is Prahlad Maharaj. And so the Lord gave him the position of ruling over the Daichyas because he was born in a demoniac family. Why was Prahlad <clears throat> born in a demoniac family? It's a very interesting story. In his previous life, 
from one of his previous lives. And how did he get connected to, to uh, the worship of the Supreme Personality of God? That's an interesting story. Um, he was born in a family of very saintly persons. And he had many brothers. And they were all pious and religious. Um, they followed their father very nicely, who was a Brahmin. And they were known for their good qualities, their charitable nature, and all anything to do with their devotion to the Supreme Lord. But there was one person in the family, there were many brothers, and that was one, uh, that was Prahlad, whose name was different at the time. He was very sinful, he was very rascal, uh, kind of a rascal, and he would chase after prostitutes. Although he's born in a very pious and religious family, still he took to the ways of the materials in a very in a sinful way. So one night he had commissioned his one prostitute, and he was together with the prostitute. No, actually it was in the morning time. And uh, so they had, a, they had an argument, and they argued the whole day. And because they argued the whole day, they didn't sleep and they didn't eat. So he fasted the whole day and he uh, didn't sleep. And that was the appearance day of Lord Vishnu. So because he performed this involuntary type of austerity, he got the mercy to be born in a demoniac family because his nature was still demoniac, but still he was uh, given the position of being a great devotee. In other words, his, spirit, his sinful reactions were all cleared up because he performed all of these austerities on, on this day. So this is a great day for austerity. We asked devotees to take on a little symbol of austerity is to stay engaged in devotional service and glorify Lord Srinidev and uh, fast. We might think, oh, without food, how can I live? But it's easier to live without food than it is to live with food. Might sound kind of like a contrary, but it is. Because the body, the body needs food for maintenance, but for energy, energy comes from the soul. Energy come. That's why you see sometimes people who are fasting have a great amount of energy because that's where the energy comes from. But when the food maintains the body, it nourishes the tissues, the bones, and the cells. But uh, energy comes from the soul. So a little austerity, which is very pleasing because it prepares the consciousness nicely. For worship of the Lord. We can perform that today. It's very easy. It's not a very difficult thing. So fasting, and, and this is the Kali Yuga. In other ages, people would do much more than just fast. They would, they would be chanting mantras the entire day from morning to night, performing various types of pujas and yagyas throughout the whole day in honor of Lord Vishwanath. So Pallad Maharaj, he, uh, he became the king of the Daityas and he ruled from that position. And so his, of course, we also know that his grandson was the great Bali Maharaj. Pallad was uh, later on became, he got married. It doesn't speak, doesn't, we don't know much about his, his wife, but he was married and actually he had a son named Virochin. The Ryojin was the father of Bali. And so um, he was given that position and he ruled from that. But he preached the glories of the Lord, although he was in the assembly of Daichis or demons. And there are two classes of people that's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, the Asuras and Asuras. So sometimes people wonder, well, how, uh, 
why are there so many demons? Because demons are actually a class of people. They are a culture. They are a, there's planets where demons exist. It's not like somebody becomes a demon. They apply for demon, you know, credit cards and they get you know, demon qualifications like that. It's, it's actually, a, these are planets, just like there are higher planets with higher beings on it. There are planets around the earth that, that are invisible. Many of them are inhabited by lower beings. Jinns, Rakshasas, these are all names of various types of demoniac persons. And uh, when the creation comes out, uh, Brahma arranges for both the uh, all of the, the types of living entities to manifest, and also, of course, also the demons too. And so, um, and demons, what is their business to cause trouble to others? That's their only business. The devotee's business is to do good to others, try to find ways to uplift and encourage and inspire others and uh, serve others. Demons are always thinking how to exploit others, take advantage of others, get what they can from others, and cause harm to others. Prabhupada says the demons will do anything. And then he said it again in a very melodramatic way. He says the demons will do anything. They'll kill their own sons, relatives, brothers, fathers, they don't care. Whatever, whatever, whatever sense gratification they want, if somebody interferes with that, then they become, you know, a victim. So that's the demons. And so Pallad Maharaj had to rule such persons. <laughs> and we don't hear much about that, but you think we do. Um, Pallad Maharaj's qualities were, were not only was he able to resist by the power of the Lord, um, he never had any enmity towards those who were trying to kill him. For instance, his father, although he, he still saw him as his father, and he knew he was a big de demon, he didn't go along with him, but he still had affection for his father, even though he his father trying to kill him. There's another story, it's in, there's one particular Shastra, it's called Hari Bhakti Sudhudaya. And in that, it's about a hundred page uh, uh, text, 50 of the pages about the life of Prahlad Maharaj and 50 of the pages of the life of Druva Maharaj. Two five-year-old great souls and in there, there is one description of one particular attempt by Hiranyakashi who to kill um, Pallad, which is not mentioned in the Bhagavatam. Um, and in it, it, sa it says that Hiranyakashi who had this cadre of Brahmins who were tantric Brahmins. So he put Pallad under the spell of these Brahmins and said, you chant mantras and destroy him by these mantras. Because people who can chant mantras, if they know how to chant mantras perfectly, just like where do we get our spiritual power from chanting mantras? The spiritual sound vibration is the spiritual, is the Shakti that comes by way of, of that energy. So when we connect with the spiritual energy and chant prayers and mantras, we're, we're really fortifying our spiritual energy. In other words, that's pure Shakti. And so this, uh, these Brahmins, they there and they surrounded him and they started chanting mantras, throwing curses at him to kill him. So the opposite is also true. You'll see that there's that one story in the in the book Journey Home. I remember reading it when His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj met one bhakta in his travels, and this bhakta was a, a Ram bhakta, but he had he was being chased by these uh, uh, 
evil people who were trying to kill him with mantras. And the only way he was staying alive, he was constantly, without cessation, chanting the name of Ram. And he told Maharaj, if he, if he, as soon as he stops chanting the name of Ram, and then he's, he's finished. They were trying, they were throwing these, these uh, mantras at him on the subtle level. So people can kill you on the subtle level. There are, there are people who have that power. Of course, that's been diminished in this age. So sometimes you wonder if you have some bad dreams or you get sick or there's many mental disturbances that come. Sometimes they come from people who uh, we are chanting these mantras. It's quite fashionable that if you don't like anybody and you want to do something wrong to them and not get caught, you go to India and you find one of these tantric brahmins and you ask, yeah, you know all about it. And, you, <laughs> and then you hire them and they do their pujas and yogyas and then they throw mantras at the people. I had one disciple she was being attacked really heavy, really heavy. She's effectively going crazy. But she kept chanting to praying the Lord in the And because she's also very strong in character, <coughs> she was able to resist it. And finally, they had to give up. I meet people all the time who are being harassed by people who hire other people to kill them to these mantras. And they see these big fiery demons coming into their they sometimes in, not in town, well, not only into dreams, but into their mind, even in waking consciousness. So yeah, so there's a class of people who are like that. They can, they're actually, um, they're servants of the demons and they use this power to destroy others and they make money on it. And so these, these Brahmins were chanting mantras. They were powerful to Prahlad. And there was about a group of them surrounded him. But Prahlad was uh, completely absorbed in thinking of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So these evil mantras, these evil, <coughs> what do you call it, omens, uh, you know, they couldn't do anything to Prahlad. He was completely immune from any of them. But there was one consideration that if you throw these and it doesn't have an effect on the victim, it comes back to you. And so they were these mantras were going back to the Brahmins. They were feeling the pain of their own mantras and they were actually dying. And they, what did they do? They start praying to God. They're trying to kill him. And now the mantras that they're throwing at him is coming back to them. But they're dying. So they took shelter of Lord and said, but Lord, we're going to die. <laughs> Lord said, all right. So he had the power and he retracted the, the curses that they were throwing at him. And so he, he uh, freed them from the reactions of their own sinful activities. That was the quality of Prahlad Maharaj, just to illustrate how selfless he was and how non envious he was. You think if someone is going to do harm to you, and you wish harm on that other person, you may not do something, but you might, you know, say, well, you might say something negative or, or even pray that they get their reactions of their bad activities. But Prahlad wasn't that, like that. He was simply thinking, oh, all right, they're asking for some freedom, so I should. And he did. But that's mentioned in that one scripture. But this is the example of a great soul. They uh, hurried us that court. When he came, the same thing when he was beaten in 22 marketplaces. He was praying for those uh, torturers to get uh, the mercy of the Lord, to get devotion to the Lord. And uh, 
It was, his prayers were so strong that Lord Chaitanya personally came and protected Prahlad by throwing his body over Prahlad's body so he could not feel any of the pain that the bookmarks were giving him. And then later on in the Mahaprakash Leela, Mahaprabhu showed uh, Haridas Thakur the whip marks on his back that he took to protect Prahlad. And he actually accepted that. And then Prahlad, of course, of course, Haridas Thakur just fainted when he saw that. So, and it says that Srila Haridas Thakur. He is a mention of three persons in one. He is um, Rachika Muni. He is himself as, as Ari does. And he is another personality. No, he is. He has the spirit of Prahlad Maharaj within him also. So these great personalities, they appear and they accept all kinds of apparent sufferings in order to preach the glories of the Lord to the conditioned souls. So Prabhupada said, when you're preaching, you become a uh, target for the evil non-doers, the evil materials, who sometimes even make plans to kill the bodies. That's happened a few times. There was one very powerful preacher in Bulgaria uh, he was making devotees and, and it was inter interfering with the mafia there. The mafia was getting very uh, disturbed by his activities because he was also exposing them as he was preaching. And one day he was walking along the, the sidewalk and one car driven by two guys, they, they just ran up on the sidewalk with the car and hit him and, and killed him. And the devotee died. And he was preaching in Bulgaria. So yeah, so there's, there's many stories that are similar to attempts by, you know, when I, when we were in New Vrindavan, we got attacked by a whole motorcycle gang who tried to destroy the community and also harm the devotees. But Lord, actually, Radharani saved the whole community by Radharani's mercy. Everyone was saved. Although one devotee did die later, and three devotees, three other devotees got injured. So <coughs> this is the way it is in this material world. If you become very effective in preaching Krishna consciousness, you will you will have enemies. If you don't have any enemies, that means your preaching is not very good. <laughs> so, so, which way do you want to go? <laughs> it's just the way it is. This is this is the material world, and therefore, it's the it's called Durga Durgadam. Durgada, the term of all. And therefore, she serves the demons also. And she also eventually kills them too. <laughs> so, Prahlad Maharaj is, a, is the epitome of spiritual uh, compassion. And not the only is he doesn't want to take any, anything for himself. He doesn't say, Well, my dear Lord, you know, I got so much devotion to you, so you know, I just need a little easy life. Give me some nice place to live, a nice maybe a palace, some servants, first class cooks. <laughs> he didn't ask for any of that. He simply said, just let me stay here and try to create a situation where I can attract people to your lotus feet. Because without your lotus feet, there is no, no hope in this world for anyone. Okay, so this is a little bit about the Lord Maharaj. And we hear, you know, how he tried to uh, preach to his father in so many different ways. He didn't give up on his father, although his father was a big demon. He tried many ways to 
convert his father into becoming favorable to Krishna Vajra, devotional life. But his father was a, you know, what we call hardcore demon. He couldn't hear anything. And he would only get more angry. It says that if you step on the snake, the snake becomes even more, more poisonous. So that's why it says that a, a preacher preaches to has four different categories. They make friends with other devotees. They worship the Lord in devotion. They give their mercy to the conditioned souls by preaching Krishna consciousness. And they very uh, completely avoid the non-devotee atheists. This is the, that's the first, that is the Madhyama Adhikari on the second class platform. These are the characteristics. Uh, a neophyte devotee won't preach. A neophyte devotee won't. Uh, usually doesn't make friends so much with other devotees, but is only concerned with his own spiritual practice. And they sees other devotees sometimes as a disturbance. Uh, and they, uh, the first class devotee, the Uttamadikari, he doesn't preach either because he sees everybody being more, more exalted than him. Because he sees others more exalted than him, he can't preach because he, doesn't, he sees everybody better than him. So, must. so but, but it says that one has to take shelter of an Uttamadikari. So they come down in order to preach. Prabhupada was an Uttamadikari, but he came down to the Madhyam Prabhupada. Madhyam means to make the distinctions between devotees and non devotees. And based on that distinction, that way they, they preach Krishna consciousness. That's why we say Jayam Vishnupa Paramahansa Pariva Chakacharya. So Paramahansa is the highest platform in the city of Pariva Chakacharya is the traveling preacher. That's the second class platform. So they come down to that platform in order to give their mercy, give God Krishna's mercy to the initial souls by preaching Krishna consciousness. And so Prahlad Maharaj is glorious in that category. And yeah, he says, I'm not at all afraid of material existence. For wherever I stay, I'm fully absorbed in thoughts of your glories and activities. I only, my only concern is for the foolish material. He actually has, he actually has love for the non-devotees, because it says that when a devotee becomes fully Krishna conscious, and they also see all, all living entities as objects of Krishna's mercy. <coughs> Okay, so we'll stop there. Any questions, comments, Pallad Maharaj? Or just these, well, Lord Nishringa Day. Sham? Glorious Prabhupada, Hare Krishna. Maharaj, uh, here you are speaking how Pallad Maharaj displayed fasting on this day uh, in a previous uh, time to become a great devotee. So we hear this many times. Uh, I mean, different times in Bhagavatam also about like Ajami and etc. Et so, uh, like Shri Prabhupada says that devotional service, real devotional service, begins after liberation. So the way I understand that is the state of mental nishta, which means the mind is always fixed and the mind never diverts. So how to take advantage of these kind of opportunities uh, so that can achieve I can achieve the state of mental nishta, mentally. Yeah, that's the process. But what they received is some special mercy. You can't call the exception a process. That's Krishna's special. If he wants to show favor to someone who doesn't follow the process, such as Ajahnail and in this case, Pilani can do that.
Okay. So that's his that's his prerogative. He can show the mercy, even for those who don't follow. But if someone thinks, well, I'll just do like they do, I'll just be like Ajahnya, become a debauch my whole life, and then towards the end of life on his chin in the holy names, it won't work. Therefore, he chanted Nama Vas, he didn't chant it Nama Parad. That's Nama Parad, you think like that. So, can you speak something about how to come to the theory of mental niche? Mental niche? Well, indeed. A liberation, they usually use the word liberation. Liberation is automatically included in the process of practice. So devotees are already on the liberated platform because devotional service is above the three modes. Someone who is acting in devotional service is acting on the platform of liberation. Prabhupada would say that devotees are already liberated because they're engaged in devotional service. But <clears throat> to achieve um, complete freedom from all material tendencies, um, you have to go beyond Nishta. Nishta is just a, one stage. On Nishta, you can still fall down from Nishta. You can fall down from any platform other than when you see Krishna face to face, then you don't fall down. You can even fall down in love of God if you commit offenses. And we have the example of Jai and Vijay. They committed offenses and to the four Kamaras, and therefore they had to fall to the material world and take up three births as demons. So Nishta is not a, it's a platform of stability, but one is not still, still one can make, one can still commit offenses. One can still commit offenses. And Nishta is still within Sadhana Bhakti, the Vaidhi Bhakti. It's only when you get to the platform of Ruchi, which is the next platform, where one is taking, there's a Vidosuji, the Kamsuti, Samasarvi, Shibhute, Shibhati, Dabhate, Param. One doesn't hanker, one doesn't lament, one is feeling the happiness of the emotional life. <clears throat> Even one can fall down from there, too. We have Rupa Kaviraj who committed offense against Krishna Priya. And uh, he was on the platform of Baba. He fell down. We had the example of, uh, you know, what's his name? Bart Maharaj. He was on the platform of Baba. But he developed what well, we say material affection for a deer, gave up his spiritual practice, and then when he left the body, he was thinking of the deer, and then he had to take a deer a birth as a deer and another birth after that as Jedvara. So although he was on such a high spiritual platform, still he wasn't careful. So yeah, it's, it's easy to fall down. It's, it's hard not to fall down. <laughs> but if you always take shelter of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, you're going to be you're going to be protected. This is where we get our special special mercy. We continue to chant as much as possible. There's where we there's where we get the protection from the Maya. Take shelter of the Maya and association. So this nishta is not a, it's it's seventy five percent of your anarthas have been removed on nishta. You still have twenty five to deal with the others. That is a tendency to commit offenses. So, 
like this one. So it's a good idea to always aim for ruchi, always aim for taste with your friend. Well, that's one of the stages. Aim for love of God, that's what you should be aiming for. And then as you progress to the different stages, different symptoms manifest. We shouldn't aim for any particular stage. Anything else? Yes. We have a microphone, right? You mentioned in Dalalara's previous class, right, previous life, he fasted on the day of the appearance of Narsimha. Right, it's mentioned. Yeah. So you want to read the pastime tonight? I have I have it in my microphone. Yeah. Does anybody have a copy of uh, KK Bindle, the latest issue? Print out of that copy. Hmm? Which book is it? It's a Krishna Kata Bindu. It's put out by one devotee. Most devotees have it. It's just a very popular newsletter. <coughs> In there is that particular story. You have KK Bindu? Yes, well, then we email and it's for you. All right, I'll read the story. You can find it. It's on there. It says everybody seems to be really fired up about this thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. Though. You see how the, how the mercy of the Lord works. You found it. See if you can find that particular story. It's, I think it's the second or third story in the list. Well, that's previous book. Yeah. Yes, okay. Listen up. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a story is there in the Shriya Puran. The Lord Maharaj asked Lord Shriya, "How is it that I have developed such bhakti for you?" Lord Srinidhi replied, very long ago in ancient days, he was the son of a very pure Veda Veda Brahma. His name was Vasu Sharma. He was staying in the city of Avanti. Avanti is now was in jail. The name of his wife was Sushila, and she was very chaste and ideal wife. She was very devoted to her husband. Bhakti uh, Rata, and she was following Sanacharya good behavior. They were famous throughout. Let me see, let me page. The three planetary systems, and you were the youngest of five sons born from the womb of Sushila. The first four sons were pundits, very young and pure balance. They were very devoted to their father, but you, the youngest one, were completely spoiled. You became addicted to a prostitute, to such a bad character you had. You never obeyed your father, your name was Vasudev. And you spent your days with a prostitute. Such a woman hunter you were, not following any regular principles. Only us saw the charm misbehaving. One night, there was a quarrel between yourself and that prostitute that went on all night. Because of that, both of you spent the entire night without food and sleep. By coincidence, however, that was the day of the Sri Chaturdasi. So automatically you got the results of fasting on my day. That prostitute was elevated to the planets of the demigods and she became one of the Apsaras. She had a desire for material enjoyment and there is such an abundance of enjoyment on the planets of the demigods. But after that, you belong because of your desire, especially Vaishya, Sangha, the association of the prostitute. You were born in demoniac family. You became the son of Arani Kashipu, but because you fasted on my appearance, they were strange. Chaturdasa, and you got the result. 
brought upon by the wicked my dear devotee. Therefore, those who observe this constraint of Chaturdasi Brahma will get such a result in Divine Bhakti. Lord Brahma also observed this Brahma and therefore he got the Shakti to create. Shiva Maheshwara observed this Brahma and as a result he got the Shakti to annihilate. For those who observe this Brahma, any desire they have will be fulfilled. This is why you have developed such devotion to me. Unconsciously, you fasted the whole night without sleep, and this was the result. This bhakti is so powerful, even if you have unconsciously performed only a little service, still such a result is there. I want to speak of the result of those who are consciously doing it. We should understand what results they will get. This is the wonderful glory of bhakti. Somehow or other, if you engage in it, you will get such results. We can understand this from the example of Prahlad. When we say Nitya Siddha Prahlad, Prahlad is an eternal associate of the Lord, then the question comes, how is it that he was born as the son of a Brahmin and was such a spoiled character addicted to that prostitute? The answer is that Nitya Siddha Prahlad is always there. But Vasudev, the son of Vasudev, Vasushana, entered into the body of Radha Maharaj. So he was a Nitya Siddha, but he was he got possessed by this other person. And then he, therefore he acted in that way. And then after by fasting, he was freed from that. That influence. And so you can't see what's going on on the subtle platform, but it's happening. <laughs> There's a lot of things happening. So we should always stay close to transcendental sound vibration. That will give us connection with that, with the pure spiritual energy. Yes, question. Maharaj, thank you for the wonderful class. Just needed one clarity. Um, one aspect of this wonderful pastime is it is so hope giving that one who practices devotional service, um, even knowingly or unknowingly, gets such a wonderful destination uh, by remembering nursing and aid. But on the other side, I feel a little hopeless, especially when you talked about um, those exceptions. Um, not necessarily like Ajahmal's um, past time which you talked about, or if you take an example about Bali Maharaj, because when we just see um, Krishna's nature being Swarat, he can deal the way he wants with his devotees. Sometimes there is a fear within the heart. How about I am on the other side? Of course, Bali Maharaj got a wonderful uh, past time after that, but initial conversation between uh, Bali Maharaj and how he was treated by Vaman Deso. It's it's kind of a fear which creates in the heart saying that how about just, it? just stay fixed in your body. So the rest will be done by the Lord through the spiritual energy. Just stay fixed, that's so. all. Yeah, we the bodies feel it's hopeless for me. I'm so fallen, I make mistakes, sometimes I commit offenses. But these things are external, they apply to the mind and the body, and therefore the effects of these things will be mitigated in the course of time through the power of one's bhakti. As, as it says here, bhakti is very powerful, extremely powerful. And those who have pure bhakti, they, they, can, actually, can, they can actually control the Lord through that pure bhakti. That's a rare thing. Bhakti is very powerful because it's the internal energy of the world. Samadhi Shakti. So, and to feel fallen is, is the nature of a devotee. Always, devotee always feels like they're in a fallen condition. But they should think, let me get out of this fallen. Let me not stay in this fallen condition.
Okay, anything else? Okay, Sri Balaji.